I am not a huge fan of the life coding interviews. You're supposed to learn and practice a lot of stuff that you don't really use in your daily life. Since it's not something that you can really avoid, I thought that I would try to find something in the life coding interview we can use to our own advantage. Let's look at the problem statement. It's a description of the problem. First thing that makes you think, oh no, and maybe drop the whole idea. Sometimes it's quite difficult to figure out the problem and very often every word in this problem statement matters because it describes some of the constraints or requirements or edge cases. When you're solving it alone, the most difficult part is to push through the first resistance of even reading this task. And during the interview, it becomes worse. In the high pressure atmosphere of the interview, you can read it five times and not understand a single word. In this case, you need to start communicating with the interviewer, asking questions looking at the examples to understand what was going to be the end result. And this is actually a skill that is quite useful in the real life. When you're project manager, product owner, or business analyst, or any combination of the above, is coming to you with the business problem, it is very often that they don't have the whole picture in mind. They don't have a habit of thinking about the edge case. This is something that we need to give them. We need to start asking questions without assuming what the feature is about. In the business requirement, every word might matter or not. This is something that you need to communicate. And this is the skill that is perfectly transferable. So how annoying problem statement is? Eight out of 10. How useful it is? I'll put it as 6 out of 10. How about constraints? You know, this little section that we tend to ignore, especially when we are working on easy or medium tasks. Section of the constraints usually indicates what values can our input take. It's surprisingly often coincidental with the biggest side of an integer. This is, of course, very far from real life. And when you're working on the problem alone, you might only look at the section when you're using the wrong algorithm for the problem and you are getting memory overflow. When you are on the interview or solving a hard task, constraints can become more important. You need to take them into account before you are even coming up with a solution. And sometimes interviewer may change the constraints to change the difficulty of the problem as you progress during the interview. It forces you to look at constraints. This is a very good habit to have despite the fact that this is quite different in real life. Sometimes the amount of data that you have is so big that you just cannot simply solve it in one take. You will need to partition the data somehow. This is not something that you will get in the life coding interview, but if you are used to looking at the constraints, you will think about before jumping to the solution. And most commonly, I see the opposite problem. When the number of items that you're working with is so low that you don't need a complex algorithm. Just maintaining the algorithm like this is difficult, but most importantly, the probability of an error is so much higher if your algorithm is more sophisticated. I also see this not in the algorithm settings, but when people are using way too much resources trying to solve a problem that will not require such scale, and that's costing a business a lot of money. So how annoying constraints are, I'd put it at 6 out of 10. How useful they are, 8 out of 10. Let's talk about test cases. I know this is the most common thing that comes to mind when you think, hmm, how life coding problems can be useful. But this is something that's worth noting. You may think that writing test cases for the life coding problem would be easier because you're only working with one separate logical unit. You don't have any dependencies or external services that you have in real life. But in reality, I find it even more difficult because since it is a very tiny logical problem, the quality bar is so much higher. But again, it builds a good habit of thinking about those edge cases. I think the most important part that we can take from life coding problems is the ability to figure out which test cases are required from reading the code. During the pull request review, you don't always have the opportunity to check out your colleague's branch to run the code and see how it works. You have to look at the code and make a decision right away. So I think the skill is quite transferable. So I would put 7 out of 10 for being annoying and 9 out of 10 for being useful. Why not 10 out of 10, you might ask? Because it is a resort for my favorite category, the complexity. The bad news are the theory of complexity is 
very difficult. If you have studied computer science, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, I have some good news for you. If you can multiply when you see nested loops, it's already a good start. If you see an array getting split in half again and again, and you think about logarithms, you're already in a good place, especially if you can combine those two concepts. This is enough to cover a lot of daily situations. And then the most important skill that's left is to recognize when the algorithm is too difficult for you to approximately assess. And then you would have to either do more research or reach out for some help. Even when you're working on your own, thinking about complexity forces you to think about scale, which is a very good skill to have. One more thing that life coding is extremely useful to make you think about is space complexity. Pro tip, whenever you're asked about complexity on the interview, never forget about space complexity. This is a very important topic that seems to be overlooked. Every variable that you create is not free. They take space in the memory, especially recursions. This is something that you have to keep in mind, especially if you're working with a lot of data that you have to keep in memory all the time. So how annoying complexity is? It is actually way less annoying if you get used to it. So I would put it at three out of 10. And how useful it is? That would be a perfect 10. And the last thing on my list is not a hard skill, it's a soft skill, but it's also one of the most important ones. The ability to reason about your approach. When you're solving life coding problems on your own, this is probably not the skill that you've been practicing. As soon as you have another person in the equation, it becomes very important. Of course, it's clear that during an interview, you have to explain why you chose the approach, validate and process the comments from your interviewer. It is useful for interviews, but it's becoming even more so in real life. The ability to reason about your codes in your actual work is sometimes something that stands between you and the on-call incident at 3 a.m. But you also have to realize when you are wrong and somebody else has a better point. Now, the ability to reason about your code doesn't necessarily make your code better, but it does give a chance to your good code to get it to production. So those were my five points that I use for my own advantage when I do the live coding. If you want to know specific data structures or algorithms that I am using in my daily life as a software engineer, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.